Hey, all right, we're gonna get into these last few slides here on catalysts. A catalyst is anything that is going to speed up this reaction. Uh, so it's gonna affect the rate and it's not going to be consumed. So here's our uh, mechanism without a catalyst and here it is with the catalyst. So unlike an intermediate, which we will not see starting on the reactant side, but in one of the elementary steps will be formed, we'll see in the product side and then later, get used up again. So an intermediate we would not see in the overall reaction. It wouldn't be in the final uh, or the reactant side or the final product side. With a catalyst, it's actually going to regenerate. It won't be used up in the reaction. So in this example right here, chlorine is a catalyst. You'll see that we form this transition state with it, with one of the elements present, but by the end of the reaction, it's regenerated. It's back to where it was. So unlike an intermediate, we're gonna see this in the overall reaction and we're gonna see it in the reactant side and the product side, no difference there. The way this catalyst works is it's gonna lower the activation energy for this reaction or bring down that energy barrier. So this blue kind of purplish line right here represents our normal reaction with no catalyst. And you'll notice we have a pretty large activation energy. In red, we see it now with the catalyst with an overall lower activation energy and we see a slightly different profile. These are the transition states that we're gonna form between one of those reactants or one of the elements present and the catalyst. But overall, lower energy barrier, so the reaction is more likely to happen. Within these catalysts, we have two ways of classifying these. So if we're doing a synthesis, if we have to generate a bunch of a drug or a plastic or whatever, we're gonna bring these catalysts into play to speed that reaction up. And two ways we can do, there are two types of catalysts we can use. One is called homogenous, where we're in the same phase. So if all our reactants are liquids or they're solutions and we bring in a catalyst, which is also a solution, we would call that a homogenous catalyst. We have a heterogeneous catalyst where they're in a different phase. So maybe we have that reaction, same thing occurring, where we have two solutions and we're gonna bring them uh, or mix them together and our catalyst now is gonna be some solid, maybe some powder that we add to this, or maybe we have a, a catalyst bed, and as the solutions flow across that catalyst bed, it's gonna speed that up. But that would count as a heterogeneous catalyst because our catalyst in this case is a solid and all our reactants are solutions. So they're in different phases. Uh, examples, catalytic converters in your uh, engine are uh, meant to reduce the activation energy for combustion. So the combustion reaction should happen uh, more easily, a little faster, so we should have less likelihood of an incomplete combustion and getting um, uh, all these different pollutants that you would see. And a lot of times uh, metals, especially uh, um, um, precious metals, make very good catalysts. So your catalytic converters, same way. Uh, the catalysts that it uses a lot of times are gold and platinum and things like that. And that's why a lot of times people will go into junkyards and they'll steal these catalytic converters because they're trying to strip them of those precious metals and turn around and sell those. We have these, like I said, homogeneous catalysts occurring in the same phase, heterogeneous catalysts occurring in a different phase. Um, most catalysts in, in industry are going to be inorganic materials. So solid metals, whatever, platinum, gold, nickel, um, or something else. Um, here's an example of a heterogeneous catalyst, different ways that they can work. They can hold a material in a specific um, orientation so that the other uh, reactant can more easily access it in the correct manner. Um, and then we have these things, enzymes, which you've probably heard of, which are biological catalysts. So these are in your body, they serve the same function as any other catalyst, they speed up the reaction, which is something you need because a lot of your body's reactions wouldn't normally occur at 37 degrees Celsius, or they would occur very, 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 very slowly. So instead of heating your body up to 500 degrees Celsius, we have these enzymes which allow this to happen more quickly. And uh, all enzymes are catalysts, not all catalysts are enzymes. And one of the differences with enzymes is they are biological, so we can denature them, unlike something, say, like a platinum or a gold catalyst. Um, same thing, it's gonna, in this case, usually the enzymes in your body will hold the material in a very specific orientation so that that reaction can occur um, and then give us our products. Um, not a lot here, just know if you see a reaction, 
can you identify in those elementary steps what the catalyst would be and how that would differ from an intermediate? Know your definitions for homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysts, same way, can you pick them out of a problem? Um, and just kind of know what is an enzyme exactly and how does that fit into the overall definition of a catalyst? So nice short video, um, but an important part of chemistry, um, hopefully somewhat interesting and you thought of some ways already that you can kind of relate this to some real world examples. Uh, so that's the end now of chapter 15, kinetics. So we'll see you next for nuclear chemistry.